by the authority of the University of Nottingham, first in my office, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. So I was astonished to have, have two. Uh, my first was at University College London, where I taught from 1979 to 1997, and I thought that was a very nice thing to have. Uh, see, I suppose it's even nicer to come back to Nottingham, where, where it all started, and 40 years to the day, almost. Really? Yeah. So I graduated in 1970. Uh, so coming back 40 years later, it really gives an opportunity to reflect upon one's career, much more so than when I had the degree at University College London, when I went when I was 30. So this is where I came as a you know, first time leaving home, started to become a historian. So yes, it's very much a, an opportunity to reflect on the whole arc of a career. I've been back a few times. I, I came back most recently to give a seminar paper in the history faculty. History used to be in this building, in the Trent building, now it's in a, a villa on the other end of the campus. I also came back to take part in a chair appointment committee, um, which was very unusual, so coming back, having been interviewed here myself as a student, then coming back to interview somebody to be head of the history department. Um, and when I came back on that occasion, I found the campus had changed in many ways, you know, new, new buildings. There used to be sort of huts at the back here of the Trent building. Now there's new buildings. But some, many things have stayed the same. The Holtz residence, I was in Derby Hall, the greenness of the campus. Um, so yes, waves, waves of nostalgia came back. I hope they will remember that it was short and to the point. So <laughs> I, I didn't speak too long. I think that's an important thing. Uh, in fact, I reflected on graduating 40 years ago, and I did my last examination in that very room where we were having the ceremony. And the person who set the examination paper that I took in that room was sitting behind me, so it was a very <laughs> curious um, if a completion of a loop. Um, so I talked about what had changed since 1970, um, things which had not changed. In 1970, I remember between the examinations and the results coming out, the Labour government fell. Well, there's a certain similarity with, with today. Yeah. There was a financial crisis, a uh, certain similarity with, with today. So I talked about how things have changed, how things have not changed. I talked about the way in which back in 1967, when I arrived, the Vice-Chancellor gave his welcome speech in the gown of a Polish university and said we were taken apart by the, 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 um, the Iron Curtain and we were all part of the same world of scholarship because now we're all in the European Union. Um, so I talked about the way in which unexpected change occurs but we're all part of the world of scholarship and research and humanity. Um, I also talked about the days when in 1969, I occupied the, this building, the administration building here, and we were pressing for the representation of students, a very radical thing. And uh, that, is, of course, is, is now so taken for granted. Uh, so again, I talked about the way in which we are all part of the same academic community, students, academics, whatever our age. So I try to give that sense of... Uh, or being part of the same enterprise, if you like. Well, when I was at school, I wasn't sure if I would study politics or history. I was always as concerned about the present day as about the past. So I've always done that in my, in my career. So books I've written about have, in a way, been triggered by current events. Um, so I've written about housing and I wrote about why council housing became such a normal feature of the interwar period at the time when Mrs Thatcher was selling off council housing. Um, I wrote about taxation, the politics of taxation. 
at a time when, again, the Thatcher government was changing the whole nature of taxation, you know, introduction of VAT and reduction of the uh, very high rates of um, income tax. So I've always wanted to understand why things have changed over time, trying to look at the present as just one part of that longer cycle of change. I think that economists or political scientists who don't understand that long run of change miss an awful lot. Um, on the other hand, I don't think you can simply take theory and apply it to the past. One needs to understand the past in its own term, and what motivated people at, at the time in the past. But to then try to link that back with how we think, it makes how we act and how we behave appear less normal, less to be taken for granted. So I like to do this interplay between one and the, and the other. And that's because I've always been interested in, in current issues. Uh, and what I'm writing about at the moment uh, is the politics of the governance of the global economy since the Second World War. Uh, I started writing that before the current financial crisis. And I think that... You didn't um, that, did you? I, I hope I didn't. <laughs> but trying to understand how the, the bodies that I'm studying being set up, like the IMF, are now functioning or not functioning. Trying to understand how we might try to restructure the, the global economy and its governance in different circumstances, I think, is, is very important. And I don't see that as simply like learning lessons from history because the past is different from the present. But it's about modes of analysis, looking at long-term change, trying to understand um, how we get to where we are, how the institutions we now have were created in the past with different circumstances, and might have become too rigid and inflexible, and, and how we change that. That is a very <laughs> extremely good Good question. I think historians in the future will look back on this as one of the absolutely critical moments. I think we're on the cusp of what, what could happen. Um, I find it very difficult to read what will happen, but I think it is clearly a, a cusp. Um, Globalisation of the first period of the late 19th century collapsed into economic nationalism in the interwar period. Could it happen again? Um, I think this, this, the decisions which are made now are critical to that. Are we going to end up with another major recession? Are we, if you like, in 1929, waiting for the actual horrible crash to, to happen? Uh, how we react at the moment to financial regulation, to the cutting um, public spending, I think is, is critical for, for that. So I think historians in the future will look back on this year, last year, next year, and say that's either when it all went horribly wrong, or phew, thank heavens, we, we got out of that. Uh, at the moment, I, I'm not quite sure which way it is. But looking back over the historical past, I think that there are a number of these, if you like, tipping points, um, and this is, this is one of them.